OPEC says it has no immediate solution to low output levels and Arab sovereign wealth funds are reportedly bidding for a stake in Starbucks. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramya Faraj. OPEC says it has no immediate solution to high oil prices and the lack of investment in the oil industry is hindering oil producers' capacity to boost output. It says it's prevented OPEC Plus from restoring production to pre-pandemic levels. OPEC Plus has been urged to amend the almost 1 million barrel per day supply. The limited oil supply has sparked worldwide inflation that could slow the global economic rebound and negatively impact millions. Sovereign wealth funds Abu Dhabi's ADQ, Mubarala Investment Company and Saudi Arabia's PIF have reportedly submitted bids for a minority stake in Kuwaiti conglomerate Al Shaya Group's regional Starbucks franchise. The overall franchise might be worth $15 billion, but prospective buyers estimate bids to be closer to $11 billion. The family-run Al Shaya Group is partnering with JP Morgan to sell the significant minority stake. The UAE's Matito Holdings, Norwegian, Skatec, ASA and Egypt's Roscom Construction are reportedly negotiating a $1.5 billion renewables-powered desalination plant with Egypt. It would follow a build, own, operate and transfer strategy. Meanwhile, Matito says it's working on the world's largest wastewater treatment plant, where the water would be used to irrigate half a million acres west of the Nile Delta. Meanwhile, Egypt's economy expanded 8.3% in Q2 of the fiscal year 2021 to 2022 and 9% in the first half. The country's GDP growth should surpass 6% for the full fiscal year, which ends on June 30th. This surpasses Egypt's expectations of 5.7% growth for the year. Shopify says it saw slower sales growth in the first half of the fiscal year. It says the e-commerce boom at the peak of the pandemic is cooling as more buyers return to storefronts. Shares of the Canadian firm were down 16% on the news. The company anticipates year-on-year -year growth to be lower in Q1 and highest in Q4. Shopify's total revenue for Q4 2021 hit $1.38 billion, a 41% increase from the same quarter of 2020. Google plans to eliminate ad trackers on its Android operating system to improve its users' privacy protection. It's introducing Privacy Sandbox on Android devices, which will facilitate more private advertising solutions to limit the sharing of user data with third parties and operate without cross-app identifiers. The company has developed IDs for Android devices to allow advertisers to gather information about what users do on their phones in order to place targeted ads. Apple investors are being urged to vote against CEO Tim Cook's remuneration. Proxy advisory firm Institutional Shareholder Services says half of the award lacks performance criteria. In 2021, Cook took home $3 million in salary and received $82.3 million in stock awards, $12 million for hitting Apple's targets, and $1.4 million for air travel, insurance premiums, and his 401k. And that brings us to today's Forbes Real-Time Billionaires Ranking. It tracks the daily ups and downs of the world's richest people. Here are today's winners. Coming in first place is Gautam Adani, up $3.1 billion to $90.9 billion. Our second biggest winner today is Jeff Bezos, up $1.6 billion with net wealth of $184 billion. And our third place winner today is Robin Zhang, up $1.1 billion with net wealth of $48.8 billion. Check out our website and social media for all of the latest billionaires news. Sotheby's will put a 15.10 carat De Beers Cullinan Blue Diamond at auction in Hong Kong on April 27th. The diamond was cut from an over 39 carat rough stone discovered in April 2021 in South Africa. It was bought by De Beers and diamond cutter Diacor for $40.18 million. Sotheby's expects the diamond to fetch over $48 million. Not a bad turnaround. I'm Ramya Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.